Round one. Fight. Heroes never die. I'm Commander Shepard, and this is my favorite store on the Citadel. <laughs> I used to be an adventurer like you. Then I took an arrow in the knee. Power, sex, sex, power. They both come down to one thing. Hungry Gamers. Hello, 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 and welcome, boys and girls, to the 239th episode of the Hungry Gamers podcast. We are powered by 8bit.net, Audio Technica, and Paracetamol. I'm your extremely humble host, Brendan White. You can find me just about everywhere, Brendan 8 Beard. And joining me today, my podcast, Ride or Die, the rogue to my paladin. You can find her on Dem Socials, at Miss Ellie Hart. <gasps> Ellie Hart, how are you doing? I'm a mess. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, listeners. <laughs> I'm having a rough one, guys. And that's why you were sponsored by Paracetamol. Um, yeah. R- running on, like, running on low. And uh, probably a smaller percentage of brain than is usually used. So, yeah. So just uh, be gentle this be week, fine. listeners, uh, for episode two, three, nine. Uh, yeah, my co-pilot here. She's walking wounded. She's medicated. <laughs> We're going to push through and still deliver you that tasty THG related content and banter. But mm-hmm. uh, you know, it just might be slightly subdued because. I don't want to talk loud and, and hurt Miss Hart's brain any more than I already do. <laughs> and we just want to survive through, especially now that I'm on the start of a long weekend. I want to be able to survive and enjoy my three-day weekend. So uh, right. huzzah for Labor Day. What a what a cop out of a public holiday that is, but I'll take it. Well, some people don't even get it off if you like I very retailers sometimes make their people work, which is ironic, right? <laughs> yeah, scum. Scum, mm. scum, scum. But I guess you know, those people, the retailers that do work, they get double time and a half. So I guess it's, you know, yeah. better paid Labor Day. I don't know. But anyway, tis what it is. So uh, I guess we could start things off how we always do here at the old THG factory and uh, talk about what we've been doing the past week. Miss Hart, yeah. I sort of alluded in the in the intro there, the, the rogue to my paladin in reference to a game that you've been playing a little bit of. Uh, Tell me what you've been doing, Miss Hart. Yeah, I've returned back to Hearthstone. Um, I've been actually playing it quite religiously. It's like a um, like pre-bedtime kind of habit now mm-hmm. where I'm trying to get better and better at, um, I guess, just playing it. I've never been really good at it, and I'm versing like my husband. And <laughs> they've actually done this thing now in Hearthstone where if you're versing a friend, you can borrow their deck. Oh, so really? I've actually, yeah, I've actually been using his deck, um, a mage, his mage deck that he's kind of put together. And I've been using that. So I guess he's been practicing against his own decks, technically. Fair, so, um, fair. Yeah. So, but it's been a little, it's been a lot of fun. I'm getting better. <laughs> not great, but getting better. I'm not really um, good at reading what the what okay the like cards foretelling take. what could happen and yeah, things yeah like i like i almost had him on the wire and i had this card that um i made zero like i was able to make it a zero chance card and like all i had to do was attack him like just with one of my guys already on the field but i the card said it's a destroy all um destroy all minions and he already had a <laughs> setup and i thought i was gonna do like a massive ball like baller move and it turns out that i also destroyed all my minions <laughs> So yeah, you, you need you need to read the fine print on the cards you're playing. <laughs> That's for sure. My brain says. My brain tells me why would it attack my? Why would I hurt myself? But it's happened a bunch of times where it'll there'll be a card and it'll be like deal like three uh three attack to random player, and I'm like yeah okay, and then it attacks me and I'm like what the fuck? Yeah, so, it's di- a lot of dice roll, like a lot of RNG happening yeah. in uh in her. So when I like that, like. And then you got that risk reward where if you play one of those cards and like a death rattle can pop off on your guys as well. But it's like, mm. you know, the, the boom you get from that initial play could be worth that risk. So I like that yeah. um, that element. Yeah, I, haven't, I, haven't, I can't remember the last time I played her. So it's, it's easy, easy two, three years ago, maybe. Like, and I, it's a shame. Like, it's not a bad game. I really enjoy playing it, but it's just a game you've got to invest a lot of time in to get good and competitive at, especially with the meta where they're constantly cycling out cards that exactly. I love to use and then they're no longer part of the meta. So it's like, God damn it. Yeah, that's, kind of, that's why I was like kind of shocked when I 
cards. So I'm like, no, I'll play my own mage hand. And like, I had none of the cool cards that he was like in his mage deck. So I was like, oh, like, it seems like you've got to keep playing so you can get these, keep on like opening more card packs so then you can get even better cards. So yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, maybe I'll install it one day and we can have some, have a couple of battles, see, yeah. see who sticks up. See yeah. if any of my cards are actually still playable. Uh, <laughs> you got that's a always deck, the like, fun five. part. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully I can still use my Leroy Jenkins or my um, my Varus Rin was uh, my two fave cards that I used to roll. But uh, mm. yeah, I couldn't even tell you if they're still part of it. But anyway, because anyway, I'm- outside of Hearthstone, um, I see you've been playing a game by a studio that I've been playing a little bit of a game of too. So uh, you've gone back to uh, Titanfall 2. Yeah. So um, as previously mentioned, like I love Titanfall 2. Um, it was a great time when it felt like a short time, but it was a great time when we played it. Uh, but full confession was, was that I actually never did the campaign. I just, you know, went balls to the wall, jumped straight into our multiplayer. And everyone says that the campaign for Titanfall 2 was actually brilliant. And I one really of the missed best. out. Yeah. One of the best. So I'm like, okay, you know what? Like it's on game pass. It's raring to go. Um, let's get into it. So I like loaded it up and, um, it just captivated me right from the start. Like, um, full confession, I probably spent a little bit too much time in the gauntlet than I should have. (laughs) Um, that thing is a lot of fun. Uh, but then, um, just having like the little penny drops of like guns that are in apex being in Titanfall and me being like, Oh, that's so cool. Uh, but I'm sorry to say this again. I got motion sickness, so I had to turn it off after all. <laughs> it's it's very fast paced. It's very frenetic. Uh, yeah. But but it is like from a shooter genre overall, it is one of the best campaigns you'll so ever play good. across yeah. any franchise. It is so freaking cool, and it sucks that it didn't get the love it deserved at launch. No, but it's it's getting a lot of love. Unfortunately, by the time this podcast comes out um respawn made titanfall 2 free on steam um Mm. the week uh, this weekend so hopefully some enough people saw the tweet on twitter um but yeah obviously due to the new apex content that's coming out there's just been a lot of um titanfall titanfall 2 kind of like love and regurgitation and a lot of people getting back into it replaying it um i did see a statistic saying that um I think like player base went up by like 600%. Yeah. Which is awesome to see. Yeah. And, and hopefully things like that, and especially that, that love and this dedicated player base on the back of apex will lead to a Titanfall three oh, and yeah, it'll get dude. the love it deserves. Like it yeah. makes too much sense for them to go back to that well and expand on that universe. And now that they've got these other characters that they could weave in or easter egg through here and there yeah. just as little nods i think it's great like they've got this big shared world now that they can play with it's pretty cool to like playing into the story and just seeing um like i said like from the guns references to the like the companies and um even seeing like logos that i've now seen in apex with certain characters um it's just been really cool just having that connection happen between the two um but I completely forgot how much I loved um, being inside an actual like Titan, like actually oh, being yes. inside like and using all like the little shield functions and all the little doodads. Like, because I completely forgot. Like, I remember like the whole joke of calling down the Titan and landing the Titan on people, and like even like punching. And but I forgot about even like the shield where you hold the shield and the bullets come at you and you yeah. collect all the bullets and you just send it back. Oh. Yeah, the, the different Titan classes, like the ogres and all that, where you can have mm. the big tankies or the fast, agile ones, yeah. it made for such varied gameplay loops and it's some of the best fun and the most chaotic you can have in a, in a shooter. Like yeah. mixing up being a pilot and then getting into a Titan or you know, trying to hide and survive while Titans are hunting you down. It is so good. It's just balls to the wall stuff. Yeah, it's been, it's been a great experience. And I'm, like, I'm kind of sad that I did get dizzy and I'm like, okay, like I've, I've, I've cleared a few like missions and checkpoints now. I'll put the controller down and return back to it. So, um, but anyone who's been on the fence about it or seen a lot of people bring it up, if you have access to Game Pass, um, check it out. Uh, hopefully, if not, then you 
got to play it this weekend for the free weekend on Steam. So yeah, yeah. Like I don't know if it's the free weekend because obviously, yeah, it's going to be Monday Australian when this drops, but that's still technically a bit of Sunday around the rest of the world. So you could, if you're up early listening to this on Monday, jump onto Steam straight away and see if it is still sniffing around there for free and just add it to your add it to your library because you've got yeah. nothing to lose and it's a freaking phenomenal game. Technically, it says to the third, so it could be end of day. Yeah, the third, fingers so crossed. Maybe you might be lucky. Yeah, just just check if you're waking up early. Listen about that THE, which you should. Perfect way to start your Monday. Uh, yeah, check that out and see if it's there. But um, yeah, I've been playing a little bit of Apex. Not gonna gonna dwell and dive too deep, but it was actually fun this week. Uh, I'm not saying it hasn't been fun in in games prior, but like it was a different dynamic for me because yeah. I got to play. <laughs> Not only with uh, Jack Cruz, uh, everyone's resident is it is what it is expert uh, at Cruzy underscore mate on them socials, but also NATO J himself jumped shock, into shock, Apex, shock. yeah, and that is like um, you know that's that's almost saying like oh like NATO will play when pigs fly type of thing, and the pigs were flying. <laughs> Him, I, and Cruzy were playing for a good few hours, and it was just funny. Uh, watching, watching, well, not funny, but it was enjoyable watching NATO grasp with how this game works and the mechanics and then the character abilities. And like, Cruzy's a hell, he's Cruzy's the best out of the three of us, uh, that we're playing. Like, he's he's a weapon, but yeah. it's funny because if we ever all sync schedules, you and him are both Bloodhound mains, so there's going to be a little bit of uh, argy bargy there That's as okay. far as who gets bloody because I do have my backup. It's Gibby, right? Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yes. Mm. See, that's fine. So I guess it'll work well. Yeah, it should. I have to ask, you guys were playing on console, strictly console? Yep, but with the cross-play, it's fine. Like, mm. um, Cruzy was on PlayStation, Nate and I are on Xbox. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Because I know yeah. that, like, if if you don't have a PC person attached to you usually they just favor console games strictly console games but if you have a pc person into your um in the mix then you console people get thrown into pc pc and that's that's where it separates the uh, the the men from the boys yeah the (laughs) sweaty the sweaty sweaty. level goes over nine thousand. but it was fun to play and i'm i'm just i'm just a slut for this game and i i haul my character i'm started playing loba this week I've been main and loba most of the That's week fair, just to yeah. sort of mix things up mm-hmm. and uh, really enjoying her, uh, not only from an aesthetics perspective because, uh, my goodness gracious, but, like, <laughs> it's just a cool different dynamic with with having the, 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 the black market shop on infinite access, it feels like, the, the sort of the ultimate timer on this thing. It's like you get it within a minute or two, it feels like, and then once you're done, you go into a next place and it's ready to pop again. So it's so quick and efficient to, to gear up really fast in the early piece. I've never played as Loba, but like I, it felt like anyone who was on my team, yeah, they just pull that out whenever they want. And yep. it's so useful. Like Ooh, there's yeah. a lot of times where you're running with the wrong gun and you're just like, man, if only I could, and then look, just open shop and you're like, oh, there's my gun. I'll just pick it up. Thanks. It's so great. And um, I got a win last night. Or yeah, last night, and it was like I don't know what happened with my internet during this game, but it was so patchy, and I was like lagging and stuttering and freezing. Yeah, we made it to the final zone, and my game completely froze up, and I was like in the open in the final zone, just standing there with my gun. <laughs> actually, hard closed the game, loaded back in, and I was still alive, and we won. Like it was ridiculous. It was Could so you, good, though. Wait, wait, was this when you were playing with the guys, or you? No, this was just with a couple of randos oh, yesterday. Those poor randos. They were just like, like I know that if that if I witnessed that, like my team member just like standing doing nothing, I'd be like, oh, that feels like a disconnect. Like, yeah, yeah, but that's good. I felt you bad. Like I had a couple of kills and was doing things before that, but I yeah. think they could see by the end because it was a disconnect. But yeah, got the win. Sadly, Cruzy and NATO didn't get a win. We got a few seconds and a few thirds and things, but couldn't couldn't get the bickies. Yeah. And um, last weekend as well, I went to, went and did the solo cinema session. Uh, I went and watched the Demon Slayer film that is uh, just re-released in cinemas here, and they've done the the English dub release mm-hmm. in cinemas. So I went and watched that uh, last weekend. So good, you know. I was I was preaching preaching about Demon Slayer last week, as far as what season one brought to the table, and and this movie, um, Demon Slayer Mugen Train, 
or Infinity Train in other parts of the world it's known as is a direct follow-on from the back end of season one. So it like mm-hmm. picks up right where it left off, which is awesome. Uh goes for nearly two hours. It's a bit of a bit of a long play. Uh great combat, great heart skill. It's got all that goodness you, that I'm looking for in an anime. And um it's also like now the most successful uh animated film of all time it's the first japanese film and first anime film to reach us 400 million dollars worldwide in box office um it's set a ton of other mo- uh, box office records highest grossing film of all time in japan highest oh, grossing wow. r-rated anime film of all time the highest grossing anime film of all time in general and highest grossing japanese film of all time and the first non-american film to top the yearly box office this movie is popping off like Everyone is thirsty for Demon Slayer and cannot wait for season two later this year. But yeah, the movie's so good. Oh, there's only one season out. Only one season, yeah. Season two comes out hmm. um, our winter, rest of the world, summer. So it's coming out sometime Same. between maybe June and August, hmm. uh, which I'm keen as a bean for. Because I thought there must have been already like multiple seasons of this uh, no. anime. But if it's only one season, how many episodes? Anime is usually pretty long, isn't it? This was 20, 23 episodes, I think, in the okay. first season. Twenty three. Mm. It was it was above twenty, and you know they're twenty to twenty five ish minute episodes. So, uh, yeah, it's a good good chunk there. And as I said, it's on Netflix too. So if anyone's looking for some 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 good fun, accessible anime that's got cool combat, bit of violence, bit of heart, bit of humor, mm-hmm. this is for you. I think I'm I'm all about it. And uh, yeah, Mugen Train was a fantastic movie. Smashed a lot of popcorn. And uh, was a very oh, happy boy that day. But yeah, so that uh, what's the uh, what's the Invincible finale last night on Amazon Prime? Holy guacamole! Is that yeah. show hyper violent? And I'm all for it. If you're wanting uh, you know animated violence, this is another one uh, that is in your wheelhouse. I know you watched the first episode and you're like, oh, not for me. But go back, it go back, like Miss Hart. It's really hard when you have like a really bad um experience with the first episode of something and especially in the climate like right now where we have amazing mu- movies and tv shows like all at our fingertips um it's really hard to convince yourself to return to something that you had a bad experience with. you're like i could invest this somewhere else like i know everyone loves it and everyone talks about it but yeah <laughs> like i probably will eventually <laughs> watch it i don't know but yeah it's only just- eight episodes and uh, like the world's the world's very positive on it. Like it's just been renewed not only for a second season but a third season. So they've announced two two more seasons at least coming of Invincible. So uh, yeah. yeah, it's good fun, good fun. And holy moly, the finale though, there was some violence and some big emotional gut punches thrown around. I'm not saying what's happened, but whoo, it hit me, hit me many ways. I already think some people on Twitter already spoiled it, but um... you scumbags. You're not as clever as you think, Twitter. You're not as clever as you think. No. Don't and, and don't try and be clever like that. Don't try and like be vague enough to get people going, oh, I think I know, but then you, you like almost get too indirectly direct, you like, know? I think it's like people people post something where they're like, This is technically not a spoiler, but by posting like that thing a person can put pieces together and go well if you're posting this then i understand that obviously something of this significance happens which could be in relation to that blah 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 so by deduction i know that this happens you know like yeah just don't just just you know you can you can say you enjoyed the finale or wow it was hit me or was emotional but don't don't go into specifics or like attach a gif or a photo that's yeah if anyone's watched an episode prior would understand where you're going with like don't be that person yeah like um also full confession i haven't uh watched the last two episodes of um uh falcon, falcon either yeah. show, no. but that got spoiled pretty quickly too like um yeah like the last episode i believe that got spoiled for me like within the day of its um yeah, the, like I'm not going to say exactly what for the people that are fortunate enough to miss this, but the amount of art that's just doing the rounds now oh, yeah. of Falcon, it's everywhere. It's yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Like I understand, like for me, like I'm not going to bitch and moan because I have been <laughs> really not trying my best to catch up with it. So I'm not going to sit here and go, well, spoilers, if I'm not even trying to watch it. But um, I think there has to be some kind of understanding that not everyone has – 
the ability to consume content within a 24 hour cycle and then to be the person that's like well stay off social media it's like I think it's easier for you to say like we'll stay off social media because I want to talk about it I want to like you know announce it to the world like yeah you can mute things but sometimes not things get muted yeah and then just to say to stay off social media just so you miss this one thing but then you have to miss out on everything else yeah it's unfair I don't know I, don't know. I just think people can kind of at least hold their tongue for at least like at least when it comes to spoilers for mm like 40 42 maybe a weekend i don't know i yeah, don't know what i expect a week from would be nice yeah like yeah. if you want to talk spoilers go on to a forum where where there's dedicated threads yeah. to talk spoilers don't, don't try and get your clicks on your socials or your your hotness on your instagram posts like yeah just just be better everyone's busy yeah people have a what? life and yeah. some people just don't care yeah and those people that don't care hopefully they can care about those sexy 8-bit founders coins. Uh, they are still available over at ko-fi.com forward slash we are 8-bit for the low price of $20 AUD. That'll get shipped to you no matter where you are on planet Earth. So uh, get in on those. Uh, they are selling very well. Uh, we're down to, I think, about half of the uh, half of the supply left. So mm -hmm. if you do want to get in on one of these, get in quick because once they're gone, they are gone. This isn't one of those bullshit closing down sales at the rug store or the the knife shop you know this isn't 60 percent off and then we're going to get another batch of these three months later once they're gone they're gone so yeah. uh yeah if, if you want to get in on one of these 20 bucks including delivery to no matter where you are on earth and we'll get that to you asap doing another shipment uh like heading to the post to do another shipment on Tuesday or Wednesday this week. So you've got a couple of days if you want to get in on this run. I'm sort of going weekly at the couple moment. A couple of days. Just to lessen my time at the post office because it is a mess. And I don't know if it's just me as well, but the, the temperatures in post offices, I don't like it. It's muggy and I always get hot and sticky in them, especially if I'm stuck in the lines. So mm. I try and lessen the time I spend in these places Not here. because they're gross that and smelly. Here. The post office here, you walk in, it's like an ice cube. Oh, see, I'd like, I want that. This is like the AC's like, feels like the AC's running at like 25 degrees or something. So it's just warm in there and <laughs> sticky. It's gross. But uh, something that isn't gross, obviously, yeah, ko-fi.com forward slash we are 8-bit. If you want to subscribe to us at a monthly fee of $5 AUD, you can get access to exclusive podcasts available only on ko-fi.com or you can get early access to a ton of 8-bit related content as well as automatic entries and bonus entries into regular giveaways. And on the topic of giveaways, congratulations to Lim Hart for winning our April giveaway. So uh, yeah, at Limo Tank on them socials dropped us a nice tasty iTunes review and uh, our May giveaway will be live sometime this week. Uh, keep your eyes and ears peeled for the social details on that, but it's going to follow a similar way to enter. Just simply... Give us a rate, rating, review, subscription. Give us that review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, drop it into our socials or email Hello 8 bit and you immediately go into the draw to win a heap of 8-bit and Audio Technica related swag. But on the top of Audio Technica, Miss Hart, let's uh, give them a little bit of a bit of a plug and then we'll get into some news. Mm -hmm. So listeners, whether you're a budding podcaster, streamer, YouTuber, or just an audio file. Audio Technic has you covered with the best range of audio equipment in the market to date. If you've ever listened to us at least once before, there's a strong chance that you've heard us talk about our podcast origin story and the fact that Audio Technica have been with us from the very beginning. The AT2020 were the very first mics we ever hungry gamed into, and we all know you never forget your first. Navigating the world of video game and pop culture with the leaders in audio-based equipment has been quite the journey. The news might not always be the best, almost positive, but our audio quality is certainly great. And listeners, you can start your content creator journey with the Creative Pack Pro, which includes the AT2020 USB Plus microphone, ATH-M20X headphones, and a handy boom arm to mount said mic. It is the perfect kit to get you started on the road to audio-based greatness. If creating content isn't your thing, fear not, as Audio Technic can upgrade your vinyl record, uh, your vinyl record listening experience with a sexy range of turntables, improve your KD ratio via their market-leading gaming headsets, or just improve your general listening experience thanks to their wide range of headphones that come with all the latest bells and whistles. We're talking Bluetooth, noise cancelling, in-ear or over-ear. 
There truly is something for everybody over at audiotechnica.com or audiotechnica.com.au for those Aussie based listeners. Get over there, get yourself some kit ASAP. On to the news. This week's news headlines. All right. And the first bit, uh, we're calling this, uh, you know, the target acquired section. So we're talking rapid fire shots heard around the industry this past week. And the first one, Returnal is apparently pretty heckin' good. 86 currently on Metacritic with a lot of universal praise with the uh, preliminary releases drop up, uh, preliminary reviews dropping this week. Uh, I think it was maybe Wednesday night or Thursday, I think yeah, it was the, the embargo getting lifted. Um, I've got a copy of this installed, preloaded on my PlayStation 5, and it's going to be the first game or time I've played my PlayStation 5 since before Christmas. So I'm oh uh, excited to. Uh, to power this sucker up and get this experience because, yeah, a lot of positive press on this one, Miss Hart. You still on the fence or you, you thinking about it? Unfortunately, the reviews have kind of confirmed it for me that this isn't going to be my kind of game based on how a lot of people have explained how it plays. Um, it does sound quite punishing for me. Um, especially considering how long they say runs go for. And um, a lot of people have actually experienced the game kind of bricking or, well, not bricking, but like um, kind of just absolutely like shutting down midway through a run. And since runs, yeah, since runs go for quite some time, a lot of people's work kind of gets undone there. So um, it looks beautiful. And a lot of people are saying that the haptic feedback from the um, PlayStation 5 on controller. On the DualSense, yeah. yeah mm. Like apparently it's pretty good, but I might just have to sit on the fence and just watch everyone else play this one, unfortunately. Yeah, I've um, I've been like, I'm in an iron because I'm not a big, uh, not a big roguelike guy, but the yeah. fact that I'm le- reading a few of these reviews and it sort of certainly leans into more arcadey shooter vibes as well. I'm like, mm-hmm. okay, it's sort of holding me there and it's a little bit more forgiving than say the Souls games and stuff. So I'm like, okay, I'll give this, I'm going to give this a spin. Let's see mm-hmm. how it goes. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to play that over this weekend and report back in full uh, next episode on THG 240. One, apparently one of the best descriptions comes from uh, Blessing at Kind of Funny who says it's like Hades mixed with Control. Yeah, Same. which, uh, you know, I love both of those games. So um, let's go. Let's go. Something else that's uh, a little quick hitter. Nino Kuni, Revenant Kingdom. It's going to be known as Prince's Edition. It's going mm-hmm. to be coming to the Nintendo Switch later this year. So obviously PlayStation exclusive. Nino Kuni, Revenant Kingdom was the second entry into the Nino Kuni gaming franchise. Uh, the next part I uh, wanted to highlight. Netflix's Castlevania adaptation is getting a fourth and final season so the first three seasons are available right now on Netflix to watch and consume. I really like it. Uh, really, really good um, adaptation from the gaming source material, uh, quality quality animation, quality combat, uh, bringing the whole, you know, Dracula story uh, full circle in this. And uh, have you you watched any Castlevania, Miss Hart? I, think, I believe I watched the first three episodes and kind of just left it. Okay. <laughs> you didn't feel it? Not not your jam? Not your bag? I don't know. Though. I can't remember what it was about it that kind of obviously didn't capture me, that didn't make me want to watch it as much. I'll have to look it back. Maybe I'll have to just rewatch it. Maybe it was just a bad day. It certainly, like, the first season was fine for me, but I think second and third seasons really got good and really good oh, for me. Okay. So, And they're only small seasons. I think the first season... I believe, Might have been like eight episodes. I believe the first like season that. was short, and I think yeah. a lot of people, I think, tried to win me over on that, which is smart because, yeah, short attention yeah. span apparently. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Um, something that I think will also help win you over: Destiny's first ever raid. We're mm-hmm. talking Vault of Glass coming to Destiny Two on the twenty second of May. Memories. Although I've never completed a raid, really. Um, Vault of Glass is I just is iconic in. I don't know. I, for me, it's like a time capsule on some of the greatest like memories of Destiny. Um, it was such a great time. I just remember like the first raid of like people doing the World of Glass and watching everyone, you know, try to beat it and lose friendships. It was a great time. It was a great yeah. time. Well, yeah, people can lose more friendships come May twenty second, but uh, but I think it's. Like they haven't increased the difficulty level or anything to truly reflect how to be against your your current gear scores, but it could still be fun, good challenge, and a nice little nostalgia hit. Different weapons. Yeah, 
that's it. Different different weapons, different abilities. So you can sort of go at things a little bit differently. Mm. Uh, something that uh, you're going to be going at a little bit differently, a little bit down the line now. We're talking about Resident Evil Reverse, the uh, the free pack in that was going to be dropping with Resident Evil Village this month. Oh, I was going to say next month, but it's first of May here now. So this month, um, it's been delayed until uh, the US summer slash AU winter because the game is buggier than a bag of cockroaches. So uh, yeah, we've got to wait to see what happens with this one. Obviously, this is like the six player multiplayer with a bit of a cartoon aesthetic with various characters from the Resident Evil universe going head to head. Oh boy. <laughs> I, I think we're okay with this though, right? Like was anyone yeah. kind of like chewing at the bit waiting for this one to come out? Like I think we are more keen on Village. Yeah, I'm very, 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 very keen on Village, but this game <laughs> looks rough. Uh, it just looks like it's it's a pack-in game for sure. And um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. And if it does hopefully come out unbroken and complete by you know back end of August, who knows? We'll see. But Capcom have been pretty decent in, in this, the release and support of, of uh, current games. So uh, there's hope that it could be okay. Maybe. Yeah. All right, a uh, bit of a bit of a meteor article here, and I've uh, titled this one "Show Me the Money, But Less Than Before, Please." And this uh, comes with words from Danielle Partis over at GamesIndustry.biz. Activision Blizzard has extended Bobby Kotick's employment agreement, which will see him serve as company CEO until at least March 31st of 2023. But it comes with a pay cut, as noted in a recent filing. Kotick's agreed-upon base salary has been voluntarily reduced by 50% to align with company targets. This equates to an $875,000 reduction. We're talking US dollars there. In line with this, Kotick also agreed to reduce his target annual bonus by 50%, a potential reduction of $1.75 million for fiscal years 2021 and 2022. However, Kotick is still eligible to earn up to 200% of the reduced base salary due to exceptional factors detailed in an extension amendment. The amendment notes that under Kotick's leadership, Activision Blizzard's market capitalization has increased from less than $10 million to over $70 billion with an 8,100% increase in shareholder return between 2000 and 2020. Kotick's salary came under fire last year with with company shareholders arguing that he's paid too much. The notion was supported by the CTW Investment Group, a firm set up to challenge excessive ex- uh, exec- uh, excessive executive pay. That's a tongue twister. Mm. Urging shareholders to vote against the decision to remunerate Kotick in line with previous years. Additionally, Kotick could still could be uh, additionally Kotick could be set up to receive up to two hundred million dollars as a result of Activision Blizzard's success over the last year. CTW also criticized this notion, deliberating whether Kotick should be solely compensated for company-wide success. So we talked about this a, mu- a couple of months back now, maybe, uh, mm. where this this announcement as far as the bonus that uh, Kotick is in line for came out at very bad timing because they also uh, culled 200 staff from their esports side of uh, Activision Blizzard. But um, I can see some positives like, you know, he's reduced his base salary. He's reduced his his annual commission uh, both by 50%. Like imagine like combining the the, the base, com- uh, base commission as well as his salary, that is uh, $2.5 million he said goodbye to per year, uh, which is a big chunk of change. But obviously he's looking at the, the end game here where he can still get a potential payout of $200 million, which is... Uh, whew, Okay. Oh, only two hundred. Uh, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I I believe I said the same thing um, the last time we announced um, that, that we t- discussed this news story, where um, they always talk about these, you know, head honchos of companies and how they make these bonuses and these billions, and then it, there's always just mention of, you know pay cuts and uh you know we don't have enough staff we, you know we're gonna get rid of staff we don't have like it's so hard to kind of think that, that he's still the good guy um when you just constantly see that the studio like is culling staff by the hundreds as well as having like you know issues with certain like practices and safe like work practices and such like that 
uh, I don't know. Like, I understand that it's like sometimes you do have to cull. There's like certain business decisions that have to be made in order to make money. And he obviously has shareholders that he has to take into consideration, yada, yada, yada. But like, when you're talking these big bucks, and especially in the climate right now where a lot of people are fighting to keep apartments, it just, it just, it, it's, it's painful to talk about. Yeah, it's, it's the whole the rich get richer, you know. Mm. Uh, the, the big CEOs and CTOs, CFOs and whatever other C-based set of three letters you want to throw in there, they're, they're you know, they're, they're getting paid the big dollars where the people underneath uh, helping them earn those big dollars aren't often getting compensated. So it's always a bit, bit of a dicey, dicey topic. Like I can respect that at least he's taken a pay cut and a reduction in his potential year-on-year commission, but this whole two hundred million dollar uh, overall accelerator that he could pop is is absolutely bananas. Like the the market, like under under his leadership, going from ten million to seventy billion. You know that's that's huge. But like obviously he is not in twenty years. Yeah, twenty years, eight thousand one hundred percent increase in shareholder return. So you know that's big time. But obviously it's on the back of the products and the the underlings and the devs and the mark everyone like it's it's a there's many many cogs in this machine so hopefully they get some some increases in uh, remuneration reflective of, of those numbers too but sadly they'll get a, a pittance compared to compared to uh kotick and co but yeah, it's it's still crazy. Still and to, crazy. And to be fair, it's not like this guy's doing it out of the kindness of his heart. Like the CTW Investment Group kind of pointed it out, like saying, yeah. like, "Hey, you're paid too much." So I don't know. Like, like I I understand how business works, and I always understand that there's some big cheese at the top that you know is make gonna make the make the big bucks for whatever reasons. But mm. it's just it's a sour sour taste. Yeah. Yeah, corporate fat cats and all those cliches. But, uh, you know, we'll probably hear more about this, uh, not only just from Activision Blizzard, but from some of the other studio figureheads and stuff. I know some of the other studios, there'd be similar situations like this going on all the time. But yeah, Activision Blizzard is certainly like a, a heat magnet for, for news headlines, whether it be positive or mostly negative press for the most part. But uh, yeah. Tis what it is. Mm. Uh, the next, uh, the next one talking about layoffs. Uh, there's, there's sort of some. He said, she said, they didn't say people are going, but they are go- aren't going type of situation going on. And so we had some original news popped up on uh, GamesIndustry.biz regarding uh, Toys for Bob and uh, Nicholas Cole, who's a character designer over at Toys for Bob, who was working on Crash Bandicoot Four, uh, shared some news on the socials where he said it was the end of an era. Uh, responding to another Twitter user uh, where he says, everyone I interface with and worked along with was let go, but added that it was not a total shuttering, end quote. So uh, Activision have come out and hard denied that uh, the downsizing at Toys for Bob is a thing. So there is, uh, you know, some some finger pointing and, and a little bit of where's the truth, where's the where's the fiction here? Mm-hmm. But um, what's happened from what we can uh, what we can derive this morning is that Toys for Bob and their staff are still whole for now, but um, their focus has just been force shifted to support Call of Duty Warzone instead of you know the Crash Bandicoot games or Spyro and some of these other titles that people were hopeful for. Yeah, I, th- I think that the main thing was a lot of people. Um, were discussing that the like the love for like crash and then the anticipation for spyro um they feel like that because as we've reported call of duty makes the money call of duty is the breadwinner for like activision and everything so they would want to put all their resources and all their hands on deck for producing that content um i believe someone i can't remember it was on a discord actually pointed that that uh toys for bob also changed their logo or something like that to line up with like a call of duty look but um overall it's just it's just it's like we can never truly understand um shady practices unless someone really really like calls it out like you know your big big wigs of journalism and gaming that can actually you know show show the facts and actually say this is 100 percent what's happening but yeah i mean it is activision 
So I'm not exactly surprised, you know? So uh, there's there's probably more fact than fiction from uh, this sort of bit of info that Nicholas Cole shared out there. But we'll see. It'll all come out in the wash eventually. Yeah. Okay. And then internet, gaming, social media discourse will uh, set it all on fire anyway. As it does. Yeah, God. What a world we live in, Miss Hart. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. We're talking morphic. This is a very numbers-oriented episode here, I've just realised. So the next... Uh, Next headline, uh, Sony and Microsoft gaming division sales launched to new record highs. And I've grabbed a bit of verbiage from Wesley Yin Pool over at Eurogamer as well as Daniel Ahmad from The Socials. And uh, reads like this, two of the biggest gaming console manufacturers and technology companies reported recent financials back to back this past week. Both of them set their own impressive new records in the process. Each report proves that traditional gaming is as popular as ever, racking up record sales figures and providing other insights into how the biggest players in the industry are reacting to the pandemic in terms of customer demand, part supply for hardware and development activity for software. For instance, both companies reported the highest ever revenue from their respective gaming divisions. Sony's gaming and network services, G and NS segment, which houses its PlayStation brand, achieved annual sales above $24 billion for the first time ever. Microsoft has a shorter history in games, which means it's been reporting figures over less time. Even so, it also reached a significant milestone with Xbox gaming revenue for the past 12 months, moving past $15 billion for the first time since it began reporting that particular split. And here's some numbers, uh, numbers-based hit points that I'll rattle off. And these are taken from tweets from Daniel Ahmad at Z-H-U-G-E-E-X. So it's huge X on the socials. Does a lot of great reporting, a lot of great information um, mm. from the gaming space from a, from a dollars and cents perspective. And the first ones here. Uh, so yeah, Microsoft reported gaming revenue of $3.53 billion for the quarter ending March 31st, 2021. So that's up 50% year over year. Mm. Xbox content and services revenue up 34% year over year, driven by strong software sales plus Game Pass growth. Xbox hardware is up 232% year over year due to the Series X slash S demand plus favorable comp versus last year. And um, yeah, so overall, sort of he recapped the Microsoft conference call, the demand higher than supply for Xbox Series X slash S consoles. Minecraft's MAU now at 140 million, up 30% year of year. Games are evolving into metaverse economies and Microsoft is building new tools for creators. Other notable comments revolved around the following areas. Xbox growth is driven both on and off console and Game Pass growth being driven by content. Bethesda deal plays into this plus partnerships with third parties. So I'm going to jump over the Sony numbers here and punch through this as quick as I can and then we can have a bit of a banter about it. So the PlayStation 5 has sold in 7.8 million units as of March 31st, 2021, according to Sony. 3.3 million of said units were shipped in the past quarter. For reference, the PlayStation 4 had sold in 7.6 million units in the same time frame. Demand remains higher than supply for the PlayStation 5, similar to what's happening with with Xbox. Um, a total of 338.9 million games were sold in for the PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 over the past fiscal year, see ending March 31st, 2021. This includes both packaged and digital copies, 65% of or 200 or 65% or 220 million were sold via digital download, higher than the 53% ratio last year, 17% or 58.4 million were first party games. And uh, the last part here, the total number of PlayStation Plus subscribers was 47.6 million as of March 31st, 2021. This is up from 41.5 million at the same point last year. The total monthly active users of PlayStation Network is 109 million. This is down from 114 million last year during the pandemic bump. So Miss Hart, a lot of data there, a lot of numbers, a lot of stats, a lot of figures. But what's your overall takeaways here as far as Microsoft and uh, Sony having a good amount of success right about now? I'm just happy that they're having like relatively equal, equally good successes. Obviously, numbers aren't matching up identically between the two consoles, but the fact that they're both having, well, they're both having positives. Um, like they're both going up a lot on year on day. Um, we're seeing like 50% like increases. Um Obviously, PlayStation had a drop within their um, subscription base, 
um, uh, active users on PlayStation Network, sorry. So, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly where that translates from. Um, yeah, I'd like, I'd say that's maybe the cope. Like there'd be more people because it was working from home at this time last year with peak COVID. So maybe it's just less people playing games because they're back to the nine to fives. Maybe, but we, we're technically only on the cusp of when this kind of, you know, like COVID kind of inaction kind of started up i don't know like it seems like a very unique like it's to me it should still technically be active it should still be pretty present but yeah oh definitely especially certain parts around the world like it's still peak covid times yeah Um, (laughs) and like you see the shit going on like completely unrelated but you see the shit going on over in india at the moment holy jesus christ it is terrifying over there yeah that that stuff is just bad um not surprising was minecraft now up like 30 percent year on year uh minecraft streaming and minecraft like streamers and youtubers and everything like that is the new hotness like obviously they were always a thing but i'm seeing like minecraft being like seeping into like the mainstream of when i would usually maybe just see highlighted streamers that usually a bit more variety um but they're definitely uh taking over like you will see something trending on Twitter and you're like, what the hell has that got to do? And then you click it and it's just a bunch of like little like Minecraft, Minecraft fans just tweeting about something. So it is it is going off. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm just happy that like both consoles are doing great. Um, all the new gen releases that obviously they can't keep up with the demand, which is. It's bad because they miss out on sales, but if they're both missing out, like, on, like, fulfilling orders. Um, I actually, it is, I feel bad for people that are continually missing out. Um, a lot of people are ke- kind of getting um, upset that they still, to this date, can't land the console of choice, a lot of PlayStation 5. Um, yeah, like, six months, six months since the release of these consoles, there's still supply shortages and... and- people yeah. trying to pre-order that are unsuccessful like it's it's heartbreaking i'm i am genuinely shocked like that i didn't think it was still going to be this bad at this point i kind of thought we'd be like smoothing out the curve on people who like still want to buy one or who have still been waiting for one um makes me feel a little bit bad on yeah yeah how much i actually use mine um but yeah i i just i like these numbers i like that everyone's doing well um i obviously people are just going to use numbers whenever they can to fuel the flames or whatever console war that they want to preach to but to me personally um i just see this as everyone's doing well it's great for us as gamers as consumers um and you know gaming's on the up and up yeah that's certainly the biggest takeaway is that there's plenty of plenty of market share there for everybody to win and be successful and keep building new hardware and new software and it's awesome to see like uh and and we're still going to feel these supply issues for a good long while because mm. as we said like covid is still slapping a lot of industries around the head and and supply issues for GPU CPUs other components even plastics like in my 9 to 5 we're copping a squeeze it like even though Australian market is pretty normal and it feels like COVID is a thing of the past in a way, you know, touch wood. But yeah. like because we sell so many products from around the world, we're we're getting supply issues of of several months now on some kit because they can't get chipsets or the plastics to make housings just can't be manufactured because other parts of the world are still feeling this COVID squeeze. So mm. this is going to continue for a long a long while, but just keep your eyes and ears peeled to the socials because uh, the second these things do become available pre-order, there's a lot of great outlets sharing these and saying, you know, get on this now. You can grab it, rah, 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 rah. So just, uh, you know, keep those fingers and toes crossed that you can just line up with one when one of these do get announced and you can get your hands on a console if you're still waiting for one. Uh, your time will come. And uh, the only positive, like one of the main positives if you don't have one yet is by the time you, uh, you do get one of these, the 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 architecture as far as the 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 game base that you've got to play with you're getting a lot more triple a's in your hands now you're getting a lot more next gen games in your hands so uh it's gonna feel like a true next gen console but damn these guys are making some money like it's cool to see and it's just gonna be overall more positive for the gamer because they're turning a lot of these profits back into r&d to keep improving the tech making new games buying studios rah 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 so uh everybody wins (laughs) all right 
the the last bit of news uh playstation 5 stay to play this dropped this past week on uh, april the 29th slash the 30th for us in the australians and all the major announcements so uh insomniac's ratchet and clank rift apart was the focus of the state of play broadcast the studio showcased more than 15 minutes of new gameplay this was in addition to the brand new rift apart gameplay that sony had just released which revealed a new protagonist known as rivet Mm-hmm. Sony also showed off a new trailer for Subnautica Below Zero's PlayStation 5 upgrade, which will support 4K and integrate the DualSense controls haptic feedback functionalities. Finally, Innersloth announced that its popular game Among Us will launch on PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 later this year. It didn't get a specific release date, but crossplay and online multiplayer were confirmed, as well as some Ratchet and Clank skins for <laughs> your little uh, Among Us characters. I don't know what your class, what do you, what are they known as? Crewmates. Crewmates, that works. I like that. Uh, the last state of play was obviously uh, held this past February. That 30-minute broadcast included news and updates on 10 games, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, including Deathloop, the now-released Returnal, and much more. So uh, that mm. could still be worth checking out if you've got another 30 minutes trying to kill. But Miss Hart, what do you think of this? What's, uh, what was your takeaways on this state of play? Well, like, it, it, it didn't feel like a state of play. It felt like a here's Ratchet and Clank. Like... Um, to call it a state of play felt a bit weird because like mm-hmm. as the end of the article kind of stated, uh, February was the last one for 30 minutes and they uh, had announcement on, on 10 games. Um, and what we got was a lot of Ratchet and Clank. Don't get me wrong. That game looks beautiful. I've never played a Ratchet and Clank game, but this sold me like it is gorgeous. It like, like I'm seeing um, screenshots where people are showing that the character is like looking at his hand and they've zoomed in on his eye and you can see the reflection of his hand in his eye. Like the detail it's, is incredible. It's one of the best looking, like it's not out, but it, like just from the the trailers and the highlights and the gameplay, it's one of the best looking games I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it, it's, it's, I can't believe like there's a, there's a really like pessimistic part of me that kind of says like it can't be this good it can't look this good like they're doing something that makes this look as like they're only showing this as the good bits you know like but i can't deny like throughout the whole presentation it just looked good and rivet Ooh, is adorable yeah. she's like she seems sweet so um yeah uh but overall for the state of play it was it was just a ratchet and clank presentation Hundred percent. Like I could not give a rat's ass about Among Us coming to consoles. <laughs> I like that game. Yes, very popular. Everyone loves it. I don't. That's that. I don't. I don't <laughs> want to play this on PlayStation. I don't want to play this on anything. I'm done with this game. It's in the bin for me. But um, yeah, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart looks so so good. I cannot wait for this game to come out. I'm going to play the shit out of this game. <laughs> yeah, like it's not my kind of game. But like, if I've learned anything from Oh no, I've forgotten what it was called. The inbuilt PlayStation game. Oh, Astro's Playroom. That's right. If like if it's the same kind of experience, but obviously elevated incredibly, um, I'm definitely gonna play it. I love Astro's Playroom. So this is if this is just gonna be this more in depth story, uh, amazing level design. Like, uh, yeah, I think this one's gonna be great. It looks like a feast for the senses, this game. Like the, the graphical fidelity and the crazy universes and sort of rifting between worlds and the combat. And then, yeah, using the the, the just technical power in that dual sense, this thing's going to be a powerhouse of a game. And um, it feels like it's going to end up being one of the games of the year to me. Like, And it, and it is be. like, I love seeing some of the tweets where they're like, Watched or just played Ratchet and Clank. It looks like a PS6 game. <laughs> and like, you know, it just cracks me up because it looks so much better than just about anything that's that's coming out or, you know, out already. Like, it looks phenomenal. I'm just jealous of these kids, these little kids that are going to, like, this be possibly one of their first, like, console games because it is, like, it's a, it's, it's a game for all ages. And I'm putting it on that level of where, you know, like, your Spyro and... um like Crash Bandicoot like that we grew up with um and how you just see things like that elevate and now kid this is going to be a kid's like first kind of game kind of thing I'm like you lucky bastards yeah. you kids never know <laughs> never know the hardships we went through you know those square polygons you never know yeah what's but a yeah, save it's... file 
Yeah, God, it looks so good, though. My goodness gracious, Miss Hart. But uh, that brings us to the end of the news. Let's jump over to Nya. Tweet of the week. And this is kind of like a tweet that hasn't been fired out yet. We did it on the Instagrams. Uh, we're, we're talking about what are some of your favorite strange food combos that just work together? So we will fire out a tweet and do some follow-up on this next week on uh, THG240. Uh, but Miss Hart, what um, what's some of the favorite strange food combos that you've uh, been a fan of, whether it be now when you're a kid? Uh, what's, some, what's some quirky combos that uh, you like consuming? <laughs> So one of my favorites, and I used to do this as a young kid in um, McDonald's usually, which was um, like fries, chips, and like a shake. And I actually used to stick the fries into the straw and I would just like eat eat it's... and drink at the same time. Probably pretty dangerous, actually. I'm surprised I haven't killed myself. Yeah, yeah could have just I'm shot you in the back it. of the throat. <laughs> Those little bloody shoestring cut fries, they're, they're sharp tips they on some, some sharp of them. edges, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I just I, – I, as a kid, I obviously didn't understand it, but it was like that perfect combo of like salty and sweet that the body kind of just naturally craves and enjoys. And that's been my favorite thing. And it's actually been great because um, moving over here, um, Wendy's over here, which is like a burger joint, not like a... Yeah, they're Baconators. Yeah, but um, they have a... It's, I think it's called a Frosty. I'm probably going to get mm-hmm. that wrong. And it's pretty pretty custom practice to buy the Frosty and dip your chips in it over here. So um, I'm stoked. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm reliving my youth. So I'm, I'm my... all for that. Like, I, I didn't do it with a shake, but I did it with, like, I'd get my caramel sundae and sometimes I'd dip my chippies into the caramel sundae. Oh, Wouldn't yeah. go through a straw, but i just dip, <laughs> dip, chomp it in. Because, yeah, sweet and savory is just the best. It's perfect. It's what the body craves. What uh, what flavor shake did you have accompanying your little chip combo here? Only chocolate. Only, oh, only chocolate. chocolate. Only okay. chocolate. I thought you would have went vanilla. I'm yeah. a vanilla boy. No, no, no. And like I hated when, like growing up because, you know, because I'm a girl, defaulted to a strawberry shake, and then I got to mm-hmm. try a chocolate shake, and I don't try any other flavor now ever. Okay. Ever. So no. so if you're getting like a sundae, I'm guessing chocolate sundae. Yeah, uh, large large chocolate sundae double fudge. Oh, gotta ask damn. for it. Gotta yeah. ask for it. I I remember the first time when McDonald's brought out the, the large Sundays and they do that big fudge deposit at the bottom to start mm. with. <laughs> and, oh, so you get, bad. The f- you get to the bottom and oh my, deposit. like it's pure death, but it is so tasty. Yeah, you got to be smart with it though because you kind of got to like eat it in a very calculated way, or else you're gonna either have well, it's not necessarily bad, but you're just gonna have a cup full of hot fudge. So yeah. Yeah, Honestly. could be worse. Could, could be, be worse. worse. Um, what about you? I'm, yeah, I, I like as I said, I like I like the Sunday and chippies combination. Uh, mm. I'm also a fan. I don't do it all the time, but if I'm feeling a bit frisky when I go to the movies, get my cinema popcorn. I'll get uh, peanut M and M's. Crispy M and M's work well too, or Maltesers, and toss some of them in with my popcorn. Mm, so yeah. you get you get the the sweet with the salty experience there. Uh, the textures are a little bit interesting too, because you sort of you get a bit of crunch on popcorn, but it's a bit more of a, a crunch. harder crunch. Yeah, but that works really well together. Anyone that wants to mix up their cinema uh, viewing experience with some tasty snacks, that's a good way to go. Mm. Yeah, like I, I never like I never really heard of that until like actually moving here. I, like everyone sticks Reese's Pieces into their popcorn. Yeah, see, I'd I'd stick them in the bin. I hate Reese's Pieces. I love I peanut peanuts. butter. You hate peanuts. I just, yeah, I hate peanuts, peanut butter, peanut flavor <gasps> things. See, I love peanut butter, but I don't like it in Reese's Pieces form. Just give me some peanut butter. I don't want it in a little chocolate cup where the peanut butter's got this weird texture to it now. Like, get out of here. You know who likes peanut butter with a weird combo? Yeah. One of our friends of the show, Till House, who oh, really? actually has responded on our Instagram story. He enjoys peanut butter and Vegemite. <sighs> I love you, Nathan, but that's some fucked up shit right there. <laughs> I don't like Vegemite either, so that to me is like a double whammy of punishment. Sorry. <laughs> I'd love to know, like, it's got to be a thin layer of veggie because obviously anyone that knows how to eat Vegemite or spread veggie, I don't know what the right term is there, but you, you don't load it. You don't load it up. You don't layer this sucker up. You've got to have a thin, nice thin layer of veggie because it's so overpowering. But then it I is. like a ton of peanut butter. I like a big thick amount of peanut butter where it feels like I'm just like like it's almost like coating my whole mouth but um yeah ugh, Vegemite and peanut butter I don't know about that no well I don't yeah. agree with either so. 
so un Australian. Yeah. yeah. And and then another one that comes to mind, which I, I learned from a mate of mine, Tomo, who's in Sydney. Mm. Um he gets the old, he gets the Doritos, like the nacho cheese or the cheese supreme Doritos, and then pours a little bit of white vinegar over them. Oh. It sounds dumb and sounds gross, but it's really bloody tasty. Oh, that like, that was like my mum's thing is that we, you'd get like a hot chips and my mum would have like, I think it was brown vinegar. She would just always douse her chips in brown vinegar. Mm-hmm. And like... I think I can get it now. Like, I could get the flavor then. But as a kid, ugh, if you stumbled across that. Uh, uh. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wasn't a big vinegar kid growing up, but now I can appreciate it. Like, I hated salt and vinegar chips as a kid, I but do. I eat them now and I'm like, mm, I like them. You still do? You don't like salt and vinegar chips? Like, like, uh, like, yeah, like a bag of chips, like just like a bag of crisp or whatever. Yeah, I hate salt yeah. and vinegar. So oh, bad. I'm a fan. I'd, I'd take salt and vinegar over plain now. It was... Salt and vinegar is a totem pole bottom for me, but yeah, it's, it's moving on up. Plain all day. Love it. Plain all day. Any other strange food combos you want to highlight? Or maybe we can just bring this back full circle next week and, and talk some more listener responses. I'm just going to pitch this out because I know that one time this grossed out a friend was um, having sandwiches at school. I used to get like Devon. Is that what it was called? Was it called yeah, Devon? Yeah, yeah, Devon. The, the, the log of miscellaneous meat. It's like pretty meat. much bologna for Americans really almost I, to a I, degree. I guess, but I used to have that on a sandwich with tomato sauce. See, no, a lot of people like that. A lot of people. But, I hate Devon, but everyone loves a good Devon sauce sandwich. Good. Because I'm like, I remember always being like the weird kid and all the girls used to make fun of me because I fucking love that sandwich. If I would have two, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Such a trash meat. I, I know. Like, so, that's why I said miscellaneous meat. I actually, I don't know what it's made out of. I don't care it, either. It's a bit of everything, yeah. But like, Could be yeah, those, those knob care. meats were a, were a rite of passage for, for poor income families or lower income yeah. families or people that just didn't need to get the fancy fancy cuts. Bum.com. Yeah, yeah. No, never, fan, never a fan of Devon. I know it's got different names over here and they escape me right now. But yeah, I don't really like... um. Don't really like it. But anyway. Uh, but yeah, Miss Hart, that brings us to the last part of the potty. New releases and events. Obviously, if you're listening to us right now, Monday the 3rd of May, uh, 2.39 of THC's In Your Ears, we mentioned uh, that you can try and get your hands on Titanfall 2 for free over on Steam. So jump on over to Steam right now while you're listening to us and just see if you can get that into your cart for zero dollars. Uh, if you have no luck on that, there's uh, plenty of other content coming out this week we wanted to highlight. So uh, our Mortal Kombat spoiler cast will be dropping on this Hungry Gamers RSS feed this coming Wednesday the 5th, mm. which sees Miss Ali Hart and myself talking about that Mortal Kombat 2021 hotness. Yeah. Good that, discussion. Added. It's going to be, I think it could be a little spicy. Oh, yeah. Can't wait Got for that to. one to be... <laughs> He's the best. I love the people who are doing interviews with him now and making him do that, like, over phone interviews. It's the best. <laughs> the Colonists is dropping on Wednesday the 5th as well, available on pretty much every platform. On Thursday the 6th, Skate City releases on all platforms and the next wave of episodes for The Handmaid's Tale, mm-hmm. available on SBS here in the AU. Friday the 7th, Resident Evil Village from Capcom which is not coming with Resident Evil Reverse as a pack-in, but it's going to be available this Friday. Cannot freaking wait. And Jupiter's Legacy yeah. is dropping on Netflix this Friday as well. Uh, I'm, I'm hope, hyped for this. So this is another superhero uh, comic adaptation jumping on these streaming services. The cast is pretty impressive. Josh Duhamel is the uh, the lead in this. Then we've got guys like Ben Daniels, Leslie Gibb, um, Alina Campouris, and a few others jumping in there. So uh, eight episodes all available at once on this coming Friday, May the 7th. And also a couple of things that dropped on streaming services this past week. All four seasons of Round the Twist and <gasps> Spellbinder are now available on Netflix. <gasps> so get that in your eyes. Fucking love Spellbinders. I'm like, Ooh, like yeah. I'm so curious to see how many. It, we're, we are a sacred generation that grew up with that show. It was the fucking best. Yeah, there's there's like Lockie Leonard and a few others from our childhood are dropping on there too. But I thought they were the main two to those, listen to. Those are the Round the Twist had some piss funny episodes. It was so very good. weird it was, ones too. It's based on books, right? By yeah, um, yeah, Paul Jennings. That's it. Yeah. So yeah, we. We're we're a good generation, I reckon. We grew up with some good stuff. Oh, yeah. ABC were the kings of it too. Like 
all this local local sort of TV they were churning out in the nineties. Yeah. Yeah, available on Netflix right now. Spellbinder God. and all four seasons of Round the Twist. But is it only Australian Netflix? That I don't know. You'll have to double check. <laughs> I think also Round the Twist is available on is it Amazon? Amazon Prime, I think. So you might oh, be able to find look. Round the Twist. Spellbinder, I can't tell you. But uh, yeah, that's happening. And also uh, that dropped on Xbox Game Pass this past week, Second Extinction. So that's uh, that sort of little squad-based survival game in a Left 4 Dead vein against genetically modified dinosaurs mm. is out. So I'm going to be playing the shit out of that this weekend. I'm excited to to give that a crack too. So mm. uh, yeah, Miss Hart, plenty of things coming out this week. Isn't Anything we missed on this list as far as uh, things coming out that you want to highlight? Uh, not that I can remember. I'm I'm sorry. I'm just thinking about Spellbinders now and just the whole intro song is going yeah. through my head. It was such an epic. Ah. Oh. Yeah, no. Uh, so I'm probably just going to be, if I can, be um, churning out some spellbinders and probably make my poor husband a victim of watching Round the Twist and talking about oh, how yeah. how important it was. I just, I'm thinking back, like, there were so many crazy, quirky Round the Twist episodes, but I remember the one where um, the the boys at school are having, like, a weeing competition and whoever could wee the highest is, like, the man of the school. Yeah. Yeah, like some of them were a little bit risky. There was like a, yeah. like a was there was like a naked one too, wasn't there? Like where yeah, there was a, a naked nutty. one. Um, th- th- there's so many funny, quirky uh, stories. I think each each season might have been twelve ish episodes or so. So there might be maybe forty odd episodes around the twist to consume. I know mm-hmm. they after the first season they like recast almost the whole show, but. Yeah, um, once once they kind of recasted everyone, it was it, it kind of lost its thing. But um, is Ship to Shore? Another? It's not on there, but um, another brilliant show. I remember Hermes, the yeah. uh, like the military leader guy with the the little beret army hat. He'd always yeah. rock. It would always screw me up whenever I'd see him in something else. I'd be like, "What Hermes?" Like, and he's trying to yeah. play like a serious role. It's like, no. Oh yeah. No. Peak peak television right there, but I'm just thinking of spellbinders and they're and throwing bloody, you know, electricity balls at people. So yeah. good. And then the solar eclipse was like a like a supernatural event that was important yes. to them all. Like yeah, God, so good, yeah. so good. But get that in your eyes and ears, Netflix users. Uh, obviously, definitely guaranteed working in Australia. Need to double check if you listen to this abroad. But peak yeah. Aussie television. If you wanted to get some of our childhood. Watch some of that and you'll see uh, some of the greatness that uh, we all grew up with. Yeah, it's, it's gold. Gold, gold, gold. But Miss Hart, that brings us to the end of episode 239 of THG. Anything else you want to say before we get on out of here for another week? I'm going to go pop some pills and have a nap like Hell a good yeah. old hopefully, lady does. Hopefully you're feeling well rested and better much sooner rather than later. Thank you. But uh, listeners, thanks each and every one of you for obviously stopping on by, tuning in leaving those ratings and reviews and subscriptions. They help keep the emotional lights on in our hearts. But until next week, 8-Bit Nation, much love and stay hungry. You've been listening to The Hungry Gamers, one of many gaming and geek culture related podcasts from the 8-Bit Collective over on 8bit.net. Check out more episodes on your podcast service of choice. And while you're there, please be sure to rate and subscribe. Until next time, boys and girls, stay hungry. Hey, Miss Hart, I've got to ask, have you ever, ever felt like this? When strange things happen? When you're going around the twist? Boom! <laughs> Do you know the next line? <laughs> Have you heard the word about the, the bird, bird and the and spider? The spider, he wriggled and jiggled and jiggled. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Later, Epi Nation. <laughs>